Hey everyone, Adam Tank Guy. I'm here with Brandy from Canwell Textiles. And today we're gonna to be talking about pipe and drape. There's got, I've been getting a lot of questions about pipe and drape and I've only ever done it for like backdrops and weddings and covering up garages. So how you doing Brandy? Oh, I'm doing really well. Having some good weather here in Georgia, so. Oh, good in Georgia, that's great. Um, so why don't you just give an introduction to yourself, who you are, what you do. Sure. Uh, so like you mentioned, I'm Brandy with Canwell Textiles. We are located in Georgia. Um, I've been doing pipe and drape for just over seven years now. I've got previous experience with other big wholesalers um, and we manufacture pipe and drape and sell to event companies, event rental companies, uh, schools, theater, all kinds of different applications. Tent companies have really blown up lately as well. And so we provide all of the items that you need to create an completely different space within a space, whether it be a garage or um, a warehouse or tents or anything like that. Right. And I was buying stuff from you at the company or previously with, and then I came across you and I was like, wait, is this the same Brandy? And you are. Yes. Yeah. I left the industry for a little while, um, but I just, nobody's as weird as us. So I just, <laughs> it's so much fun. Like working with anybody in this industry, you have to be kind of eccentric and it's just, it's a blast, you know, and these guys work crazy hours and weekends and everything else. And it's just, it's an, it's an interesting uh, industry where you can keep growing and people are creating new things over and over. And um, it's just fun to develop with those kind of people. Right. All right. So there's two different areas of this business. So let's get into that. Um, I think there's the area for us tank people generally during the season of weddings and cover appeals garages. And then there's expos and they're completely different pricing and different kind of models. So we're going to get into that. All right, so there's the two different markets. There is me, who I've never done an expo. All I've done is white and black drape to like separate a small room, put a backdrop behind brides, and then there's the expo market. So let's just deal with these tent people first. Um, what do we need as a for for pipe and drape? Like what sizes and what colors should a tent company that's only going to be doing small backdrops and you know separating small rooms? Um, I think white and black is probably your best go-to. Um, as long as they're all flame retardant fabrics, I would do black and white in each of the materials provided. So banjo, poly premier, velour, uh, sheer and voile is going to be your most important, I think. That's what kind of softens the look of a tent and creates that separation. Um, and then if you're going for really separating off like almost rooms into the, uh, the tent setup, then you want to do something more heavy like a blackout velour. Um, and then kind of a lower cost version of that would be like a commando or duvetine. Those are both really good alternatives if your budget doesn't really call for velour to start. Okay. Now, if we're not doing expos just yet, we're just doing the small stuff. What size pipe should we be getting? It depends a lot on your tent size um, and kind of your client. So one of the things I really pay attention to is what customers are actually asking for and really making a note. I'd say your go-to safe bet would be somewhere between 10 to 12 feet high. Okay, uh, but also like I'm doing a lot behind the bride and groom, mm -hmm. you know, the head table. So that's gotta be eight feet tall. Yeah. Uh, because 10 feet, would we have to come too far out of the tent um, so that it's not poking a hole in the tent. So. Oh, so your tents are like gonna be like eight feet high, roughly. Yeah, yeah, so. Oh, tents, okay, okay, gotcha. The tent on the edge is seven to eight feet tall. And then, you know, the bride and groom are sitting by the edge of the tent with the wedding party at a table. And then they want a nice backdrop behind them, mm -hmm. so so that that would be an eight foot pipe. I'm yes. guessing. Yeah, for for eight foot high setups, um, just your fixed eight foot. That's going to be the most economical. Um, there's a couple of just a couple caveats to that. Your eight foot fixed is probably your cheapest hardware to start off with. It's kind of like your basic vanilla option before you get into telescoping. The only ben or one of the many benefits actually of telescoping versus the fixed height are the shipping costs. So because the eight foot is literally the cutoff and then you get hit with these like extra length fees and things like that. Like I've had hundred dollar orders that ended up having $160 in shipping just because right. of that eight foot pipe. So sometimes what I'll do on my end for you is I'll kind of analyze, like if you have setups where you may use telescoping down the road and I can do like a, a six to 10 upright collapsed all the way down, going to six foot boxes, I can ship it a lot cheaper uh, that I would have fixed eight foot upright. So depending on your quantity, if you only need a few, then I'm not, you know, I wouldn't make that conversion. But if you end up kind of covering 200 feet of it, 
then yeah, I would say it's going to be better for you in the long run because you'll, what you're spending more for telescoping and having more options, you're saving in shipping and kind of okay. playing those two against each other. Interesting. See, I didn't know this back when I was buying all this pipe and drape. So I bought all eight foot fixed and then I had a bunch of wedding planners call and say, well, we need it to go higher. And I'm like, well, all I got is eight foot. So I probably could have got more jobs if I bought telescoping then. Right. Okay. And so yeah. that, and like that I said, it does ship cheaper too. I mean, that's the thing. It bothers me personally that shipping is costing so much now and they're finding all these different ways to put fees on and things like that because it's it doesn't even give you anything as far as longevity of the product or anything like that, you know? And so a lot of people, when you're going into it, you're looking at eight foot fixed pipe versus seven to 12. Telescoping pipe is probably close to double the price uh, on an average size. And so you're like, man, no brainer. I'm going to do the eight foot upright, but I can be more creative from shipping if you do upgrade to the other pipe and you end up saving money in the long run and you have more options. Right. All right. So people watching, don't go with the eight foot uh, like I did uh, because you will get people who are going to call who want it taller. So you can go, like she said, it's going to be a little more expensive, but she'll, you know, work the magic with shipping and stuff to help you out. Uh, you'll be able to get more jobs, well, all those jobs that I missed out on because I couldn't get the height that they wanted. Yeah, I think I think as far as knowing what heights to lock down for yourself, um, I've told a lot of different clients, really look at what venue halls are around you, um, because if they're not going to use your tents for whatever reason and they do want to book an event hall, you can still be a player in the game. So if you've got a couple different event halls and they're the same measurements, you know, just keep that as your stock and then you're ready to go every time. And so if they've got um, the cool thing about telescoping uprights is you can go in between. And so if you've got a 16 foot ceiling, um, it doesn't, you know, if you have a 16 foot ceiling and you have an 18, a nine to 18 upright, you can go just under 16 feet, you know, and really get that nice, tight, full look, um, you know, so you're not bumping into the ceiling and having to get your deposit back. <laughs> right. And I've, uh, I've had to cut a few of my eight foot uprights to just go to seven feet yeah. for a thing. And now those are just, I have to mark them with tape. And now those are seven foot uprights only. It's like surgery, because if you go to saw those aluminum pipes, you have to make sure you can't bend it or it won't fit over the pin right. on the base. So I've seen that. You've got to, I've seen people do, you know, it's event people are creative. I'll give right. it to you for that, man. You get in the field and you're a couple minutes before the bride show, you know, a few hours before the bride shows up and you guys know how to MacGyver the crap out of a place. Quickly. Yeah, we, we got to improvise a lot and hope that no one sees us improvising. Yeah. You, you may not know this. But what is a general kind of pricing for that kind of like backdrop behind the bride and groom or just kind of a small order? Right now, I do it by the foot at $3 a foot. Um, so you talk to a lot of people like what is a general kind of pricing? I know it's different all around the country. How would you price just like maybe 60 feet of, you know, white? For selling or for renting? For renting. But so renting. I want to price it so that the bride or the event planner uh, is, they're renting it from me. Okay. Um, so first answer is you're right. It really comes down to what your customers are asking for, how many competitors you have around you. Um, my, a good starting point for everybody is a going, uh, thing that everybody says is if you've rented it twice, you've paid for it. So if whatever I'm pricing you to buy it, if you're able to chop it in half, that's roughly what a good rental price would be as a good starting point. Now that can change one way or the other. If you don't have a lot of competitors, um, you know, you can adjust that a little bit. If you do have a lot of competitors, you may want to take a few dollars off. Um, yours actually sounds pretty on par, pretty competitive um, from what I, from what I hear in a lot of different industries. Um, but don't be afraid to take advantage of your market a little bit, you know, and, and you can also word it in certain ways. Um, you know, I'll do it this much per foot, and I'll throw in the side rails, but really you're covering your cost either way, if that right. makes sense. You know, it's just, it's how you're wording it and formulating it for them. So do most rental companies you sell it to in an instance like that, where it's just kind of a small backdrop behind a wedding party or separating small rooms, do they do it by the foot or do they do it by the piece? Like I tried doing it by the piece before and it was just like way too hard to try to figure that, that out. So I was just like $3 a foot. Yeah. You want six feet. Even though it even though it tells the the top pole telescopes, you want six feet, I'll charge you uh, three dollars a foot. You want ten feet, I'll charge you three dollars a foot. Yes, hands down, I agree. I would price by the foot. 
The reason why I wouldn't price by the piece is because people will nickel and dime you to death. Right. So you'll they'll look at something and be like, oh, it's this much. Well, what if I do? Uh, I could do six feet instead of seven feet. My, my mother-in-law is short and they're kind of looking at the setup. You know, maybe, you know, I, a lot of my bridesmaids are, you know, I could probably squeeze them in really well. And can you give me $50 off that? So I agree. I think per the foot is perfect. Right. Now I have these few wedding planners who come, they've got their own drape and I've had to figure out how to price it by the piece because all they want are my feet uprights and, and crossbars. And I'm like, Oh, I, I just don't know how to, so not, for them, we price it by the foot, I mean, not by the foot, by the piece. And I think I'm just doing six foot of base, six foot of an upright, six foot or $6 a, uh, a crossbar, but that's a special situation for them because they're kind of annoying. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I try to, being a tent company, you are an event company already. So if you can avoid taking in additional help with event planners and things like that, I think that's best, especially if you're trying to enter into pipe and drape. Um, the best way to stay competitive is if you're not having to pay off other people <laughs> and consult with other people and, you know, use their inventory for your inventory, you know. And so I think taking on a baseline of your own inventory and being able to, it's, it's easy product to set. If you can set up a tent, you can absolutely set up pipe and drape. Pipe right. and drape is much more simplistic. So um, I, I probably wouldn't use a wedding planner um, unless the client is willing to pay for one. Yeah, well, no, we don't use them. It's oh, gotcha. wedding planners coming to us, gotcha. renting these items to do the setup. They're like, I'm just the material company. They're come the wedding planners coming to me. They're renting the pipe and drape, probably other things too, and then setting up their own thing. So they got some upcharge on their thing too. So I think uh, my, my friend was saying, uh, like, who are our customers for pipe and drape? Because a lot of us, we don't, we really don't want to go set it up. Like I right. hate setting. I, I, I can make a whole lot more money setting up a tent than spending the time setting up pipe and drape. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we still do it. Um, but like, who are our customers that we, as a party rental company, are renting to? I know it's the, it's the wedding party. It's the actual customer themselves. And then there's, there is the wedding planner or the event planner. Mm -hmm. Then there's a. Uh, the expo person, once we get into that, any other customers that we should be targeting? Absolutely. I would say, especially now, I would be reaching out to restaurants and all your local event halls. Um, they can rent from you. And so they don't have to, because a lot of time, lot, people are, catering companies are bringing on pipe and drape. Venue halls are bringing on pipe and drape. Um, DJs are doing pipe and drape. I mean, it, everybody's expanding into it because the ROI just makes sense. I mean, you're just almost immediately making money off of it. Um, and so there's really a lot of different customers. What I was going to say is a lot of, uh, of your high-end restaurants that are doing like holiday banquets and um, hotel lobbies, your local hotels that are doing, uh, you know, different conferences and, you know, company Christmas parties, renting out the space, things like that. I would definitely be using them as well. And, and just making the rounds, calling, making yourself known. Um, because people are having across the country, they're having inventory issues and things like that. A lot of people aren't able to go to their go-to supplier. And so they're going to start going down the line. You know, who have I heard from? Who do I know that's out here? Um, and so you just need to be seen, really. So I'd be I'd be making the calls. And then I would say around early, early January, I would start calling universities, local high schools um, to get them ready for graduations and things like that. That's just easy stuff to to try to nail down. Right. And on uh, high schools and middle schools, um, proms and dances at their gym mm -hmm. they they don't want to see the walls um we do this one job all the time we just drop off thousands of chairs but they get another pipe and drape company to come in and do pipe and drape all around for graduation and proms so much pipe and drape an insane amount it fills it it fills a 26 foot truck how much drape they're doing so yeah you can yeah uh for proms and uh, graduations get a hold of those the colleges and high schools yeah. And, and I mean, literally just basic calls, you know, just asking for, uh, you know, whoever's in charge of setting up those events and things like that. And then the really cool thing about that is that they're going to have you on their docket now. So, you know, it, it hopes you do a great job. You really impress them and they want to check it off their list. They don't want to find somebody every year. So, again, just like trying to set up that recurring business, you know, so that your inventory is just more than paid for and covered. Right. Now, for a backdrop, we we're talking about the DIY where. I just give it to the bride and groom. I just give it to the event planner um, at $3 a foot. Now, if I were to set it up for them, would, would 
should I charge more or should I just be still at $3 a foot? I would charge more um, okay. simply because, you know, you're doing the setup and you're doing the takedown um, and you're packing it all up and everything. I, I'm not sure what I would charge for the labor. It really comes down to each company, how many people right. you're going to use versus uh, how many feet of it you're going to have to put up for that event. Um, it'd be tough to figure out how much to charge, but but I absolutely would, though. I would do a setup and take down fee for sure. Okay, because that, um, that, that, that was a specific question someone, someone asked. So DIY, I, I would just, it would be $3 a foot. And then mm -hmm. if they wanted me to set it up, I yes, I would charge more at factoring how long it's going to take me. Right. The only thing I would point out, in theory, it would be easier to just have the client set it up themselves, the end user. My only concern with that is that the uprights are aluminum pipes and they have these slots at the top where you hook in the drape support. If somebody is setting it up or taking it down and they're very aggressive, you got some drunk guests helping the bride take it down at the end of the night. Right. It's very easy to twist that aluminum. So for for the dur durability and the longevity of your inventory, I would charge more and I would be more inclined to put it up and take it down. And it is right. very simple. It's very quick. You know, it's like Legos. It just snaps right in place and you're up and done. Um, just to make sure that somebody didn't twist it up and all that. I mean, I know you guys deal with that damaged inventory craziness all the time. Yeah, but also they take the drapes off and they just throw them on the ground. Yes. That, that sucks. Yeah. Because um, then you're definitely washing them each time and you yeah. definitely don't need to, or you shouldn't have to. Right. If, if you set up yourself and take down yourself, you barely ever have to wash them. Right. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But if someone throws them on the ground and they're there for a day, they get dirty just from sitting on the ground. And it yeah. sucks. I know, you know, people treat rentals like rentals. Yeah. People treat it. They're jerks. They don't care. Um, yeah. So now the big thing that blows all our, all our minds that, where we just do backdrops and small things. Now we're getting into an expo. Mm -hmm. And if we can do expo or convention things, it's good because it's usually off season, you know, it's in the colder months. And uh, there's usually, I mean, there's small ones, there's like little home expos, there's mm -hmm. there's uh, craft shows, there's, there's a whole bunch of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a giant thing. So like a lot of us want to get into it, but yeah. then, you know, you start sitting down and there's a hundred booths and you're like $3 a foot oh my God, this is like, they're definitely going to say no to this. How do you price an expo booth? Because most expo booths are like 10 by 10. Mm -hmm. You can't, do you price it the same by linear foot or do you price it by the booth or what? I would not price it the same. I'd actually price it more, believe it or not. And the reason for that is because if you're draping a tent, you're doing the same fixed height all the way around, same drape all the way around with booths. You're doing eight foot, three foot, different size bases. There's a couple of different elements and obviously your volume is different. You know, you do have a <clears throat> hundred booths lined up and things like that. So it's, it's a bit more time consuming. Um, so I would charge more per foot than I am on just my fixed stuff under a tent. Um, <clears throat> I think what's important with that is, uh, you know, I was mentioning to some clients earlier that the really cool thing right now is that there used to be a really high barrier to entry. There's a lot of big players out there who are covering these trade shows and it's kind of hard to get your leg in. Um, but now, sadly, a few of the, a number of those have either been absorbed or they've closed down. Um, and then also, like I said earlier, with inventory issues, some people just don't have it right now and they can't book that show. And so that is actually, this is kind of the perfect time for tent companies and event companies that have wanted to kind of dip their toe in. This is the perfect time to do that. Um, and if you're the only one in the area or one of two in the area that can actually provide enough material, people aren't as worried about price right now. I know that sounds crazy, but people really just need what they need and, you know, and they need to cross it off their list and move on to their next thing. And so, um, it's, it's, this is probably the best time to try to enter into expos and trade shows. Okay. So on a 10 by 10 booth, I know it's hard to say a price, but like, what is a, Wow, it's, it's so hard. like just yeah. like a average okay yeah so as i mentioned you know my rule of thumb is if you if you've rented it twice you've paid for it so based off our wholesale pricing i think safely i would start somewhere around 550 a foot and and what i mean is going across so and the way that the math checks out it covers your side rails your three foot it covers it, but just for the sake of whoever's buying this from you or renting this from you, it just is an easy thing to say. I would do 550 per linear foot going across, almost as if you're doing a back wall, but you're not. 
it right. still, so you, from my pricing, covers your three foot pieces, but it just helps them. Okay, so for people who don't know, that would be like, say you got 10, 10 booths in a row, that mm -hmm. would be 100 feet across the back yes. with poles that come out to separate. Now, you're saying three foot, so you can do, you know, you're 100 feet across the back, and then, you're, then three foot up your um, pole, you have other slots that would come out, and then there'd be a three foot, I'll now put a picture of this, it'll show it a lot better, yes. another three foot pole. So you'd have three foot walls separating each booth and then a 10 foot or eight foot thing in the back, and that would create your 10, 10 foot booth. Also, I have seen it sometimes though, where the entire 10 foot booth is all eight foot. Um, yeah, poles. sometimes that does happen depending on the show. Um, so with those, it would probably be just a little bit more. I mean, I'm talking like a dollar or two more. Um, if if 550 per foot sounds odd, another way you can position it is around 55, 56 bucks per booth. Okay. Um, and what's really important is wherever you go to order uh, your pipe and drape, hopefully Camel Textiles, um, you will be able to send over a layout. Most people who are bidding these jobs can get layouts. And, and the reason why that's so, so important is because if you tell me you have 200 booths that you need to cover, I'm going to do a very basic quote, um, assuming that they're all in line and things like that. Now, if you're actually able to get me a diagram, I had a customer recently, that way I'm able to really see how many booths can share an eight foot upright, how many booths can share a three foot sidewall, how many booths are in line versus how many booths are back to back. So they're sharing just the same back wall, but not the three feet, if that makes sense. Hopefully we'll get some images in. Um, and, and knowing that means that I can be very creative in how I'm setting up your quote. And so you're not going to end up with like, you know, 15 extra uprights and 22 drape supports you didn't need, you know, because a lot of them are sharing the hardware. So you don't need as many as you think. Right. So for people who don't know, at the top of the pipe, there there's these slots and they're all all around it. So you can shoot a pole out that way. You can shoot one left, right? Um, so when you're building these, they share each other. So 100 feet this way, we'll be able to make two booths on either side with with the same uprights. Right, yeah. So if you're looking like an aerial view, if you're looking over it, you with one upright, you can do kind of an X formation. Right. With drapes and, and then when customers call you too, you guys keep this in mind, they call and they say, we want two sections. Um, now, if you're not experienced, you'll just be like, all right, that is uh, three bases, uh, three uprights and two crossbars. Right. But then you go to the job site and they meant two sections. No, we want one over here and one over here. Yes. Well, that means four bases. Freestanding. Yeah, four bases, four uprights and two crossbars. Exactly right. And now you're short two pieces. So you got to have them be clear and get that out of them. Like, is this two separate sections? Are they together? Like. Um, because that will determine if you have enough pieces on the truck with you. I agree. I think sometimes the instinct, whenever you're trying to enter an arena, uh, you know, any kind of venue of business for the first time, you want to come off knowledgeable. You don't want to come off, you know, that you're super new at this. And so, you know, you think you don't want to ask too many questions and I'm sure they mean this or that make assumptions, but you also don't want to be caught in the field, you know, with too many things or too less that, you know, you actually needed more. You didn't charge right for the job. Now you're in the hole. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions, you know, don't be afraid to ask for pictures. You know, if right. you're talking about different event halls and things like that, ask for pictures, you know, because where you have to break up for like door entries, double doors, um, emergency exits, uh, all of those things are going to play a key part, getting the layout of the booths for the expo, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions because that just shows them that you're trying to be thorough. And I think right. that's really important. Yeah. You don't want to be an hour away and misunderstand and be short one upright and one base. Yeah, and unfortunately, because all these pieces connect to each other, if you're short, you cannot do the job. Like right. you can't just have a free floating drape support, you know, <laughs> like you have to have those upright, you know, everything connects to something else. So if you get the bases and somebody forgot to get the pins that screw into the bases, you can't do the setup. I mean, it's gonna be pretty difficult to try to figure that out, so. Right, now um, there are a lot of different bases. You're, you just said something about that. Um, there's the, there's the basic base for like my upper, my eight foot tall upright, um, which kind of, they store easily and they mm -hmm. look like this. Um, but then there's also heavier duty ones where you can take the pins out, where you can take the thing out and sort of talk about the different bases real quick. Yes. Um, so all the bases are steel, some of which are then black powder coated on top of it. 
Um, there are different sizes and it's solely based on how high you're going up. So for example, um, a standard eight foot upright, you would only need a 16 inch by 14 inch base. And that would come with like a three inch pin that screws into it. And that's what that eight foot upright would then sit on top of on that pin. A three foot upright would be the smallest base. It's eight inches by 14 inches. Um, and then as you get taller, there are heavier bases. So if you go to 12 feet up in the hot, in the sky or in the sky, if you go, <laughs> if you go 12 feet up with your setup, then you're going to need an 18 by 18 inch base. Um, if you go taller than that, you would do the 24 inch by 24 inch base. And then an important caveat to this is there's a lightweight 18 and there's a heavyweight 18, a lightweight 24 and a heavyweight 24. Um, the highest most pipe systems go to is 26 feet high. Okay. Um, in that case, you would need the big guy, the heavy duty 24 inch by 24 inch base. Um, I think that one's about 85 pounds. Okay. And so the taller that you go, so if you, if somebody calls me and they tell me they need, you know, 16 feet high, then I'm going to recommend what base goes with it. And then the pins also get taller as well. The bigger the base, the taller the pin, because uh, it all comes down to stability. Right. Now I've seen weights for sale too. So would you, what are the weights for? Or do you just, do you just need the right base or do you need weights in some situations too? You should be able to do the, the, just the bases themselves, depending on your setup. There's a couple of different times why people would do base weights. Um, I'm actually sourcing on bringing base weights in. Um, I don't currently have them, but I just haven't really been happy with the uh, samples that I've received yet. So I haven't brought it into inventory. Um, but a couple of different reasons that would be important. One is if you're, if you have a limited, uh, space and you're trying to do kind of a, you don't want to bring, uh, the big 18 inch by 18 inch base or the big 24 inch base. Uh, maybe you don't want to take up quite that much of a footprint and you want to do 16 by 14 bases. Okay. Maybe you're budget conscious or something. And those are the bases that you have. You can put the rubber base weight on top of that, um, to kind of add that weight that you need. It also is a great alternative to sandbags. Um, right. Sandbags just look kind of chunky and they're messy if the sand falls out and things like that. So uh, it's a bit of a cleaner look. Um, and then also you would use rubber base weights for like outdoor setups. So the hardware, a lot of it's aluminum and things like that. So you wouldn't leave it out in the elements. It's not, you know, weather safe, you know, overnight or anything like that. But if you're doing an outdoor event, you can, and you would just add the rubber base weights for stability in that, in that way too, for wind and things like that. Right. Um, another main question is, uh, we kind of went over it, but the best colors to start with, uh, we, we know white and black, but mm -hmm. then beyond that, when you're doing an expo, what are the next colors that are doing, you know, what are expos doing? Yeah, I would do, um, so yeah, black and white. And then in this order, I would then bring on probably silver, blue, and then red. Okay. Yeah. yeah and I've, I've seen depending all those. On, yeah. And so, and some, uh, some trade shows even have patterns. So they'll do, I've seen red and white a lot, you know, black and white a lot. Um, and that's always kind of nice because it, it's help. It's helpful for people who don't have that much inventory of just one color. Right. Um, you know, I would definitely start with black, no matter what I would start with black. And then I would do the white kind of for the wedding stuff. Right. Oh, guys. Um, also when you own white, you can use them as leg drapes for tents. Um, yes. So I just, at the top, I use the butterfly clips that I buy from Staples and I butterfly four across on the, on the rope. And then I tie it down almost near, like two feet above the foot. And then I got this nice white drape that I didn't have to go buy a special drape. I didn't have to go to Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics and buy drape. I just used my white pipe and drape that I already had. Yeah, I think that that white pipe and drape works, the white drapery works really, really well for uplighting, I think, as well. Right. Yeah. And then also kind of going back to the tent and the backdrop, one thing I wanted to mention, we also do printed drapes as well. So if you have a client that who has a nice budget, um, we can do a custom backdrop, you know, the Williams or images of them or something like that. If they want to do something, if you want to have kind of uh, that next, that diamond package upgrade kind of step up, um, we, we crazy quick turnaround. We just need decent images and things like that. That's another really cool way to kind of, if you do have a lot of competitors, that's a neat little way that you can kind of separate yourself and set yourself apart is that personalization. Right. Okay, cool. I think I might throw that on my website and charge a whole bunch of money for that. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Make a bunch. Um, anything else you want to add? Um, I think 
the main thing is really uh, paying attention to to what customers are asking for, making it a note, um, really leaning in on your suppliers too. you know, let them do things like this. You know, that's the whole point is that we can coach people on different setups. Um, my biggest thing that I would recommend is to literally just play with pipe and drape. So like, let's say that you want, you see something, uh, an image, send it to your supplier. Um, hopefully you're reaching out to me and, and saying, you know, I get this all the time, you know, how do I make this? And even with, um, you know, flowers and things like that, you know, you can do a lot with some fake flowers and chicken wire and zip ties and, and it looks incredible. I mean, you, you know, there's accessory pieces that we carry um, that where you can run uh, multiple layers of drape and swag it. And we have attachments so that you can add lights if you'd like to. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a lot more simple than it looks, but it looks incredibly intricate and extravagant and time consuming and you can charge as such. Right. Um, and so tell everyone where they can go to find you. So you can email me directly at brandy at canwelltextiles.com. We also have a Facebook page, a YouTube channel that has some YouTube, uh, some to do videos that show you how to set things up. We're working on continuing to just expand on it. We actually have kits now um, where things are like pre-boxed. So we've got like 20 foot kits if you're trying to just do a simple setup um, and it has everything you need, the bases, the uprights, all that stuff. Um, we're working on setting up videos for how to break those down. Uh, and then we're also on Instagram as well. And so it's canwelltextiles.com for our main website. Great, great. I got one last thing I forgot. Someone someone asked about it. Sure. Um, how do you store and transport it? Um, I know you got into that a little bit earlier before, but uh, once you start getting into the big expos and stuff, you know, time is money. You don't want to yes. be going back to the truck each time. So there's, there's, I'm assuming carts for this. I know there is, but I'm just leading you into the question. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I don't actually supply carts at this time. I don't have a welding department. Okay. Um, but yeah, once you get into, I, I would say if you're at 2000 feet, uh, linear feet or so, I, I would then start considering storage options. Um, really, when you're starting out, if you're able to get kind of those uh, those plastic hampers that you see at like hotels that are doing sheets and things like that, um, those are going to be great to just set those up and have those on wheels. Um, you can also keep the uprights and the bases and things like that. You could keep those in the box for a, a long while to, you know, as you're building up inventory. Um, and just hit those on a cart too and, and get those out to each space. What's important, and I can get into more detail as people reach out, when you do the expos, depending on the size of the expo is going to determine what kind of storage you're going to need. Um, because, for example, there are carts that hold everything. It holds the pipes, the bases, and the uprights. If you have a small setup, that makes sense. If you have a gigantic setup, which I'm thinking, you know, three, 400 booths that you have down the road, then you're going to want to separate your carts. You're going to want to have a pipe cart and then a separate base cart. And the reason for that is that you need more people to set that up. You need more labor and you don't want 15 to 20 people crowding around the same cart. You'd rather have a couple of people off setting up all the bases, a couple of people off grabbing the pipes, um, you know, just kind of the separation of labor. So things like that are really important on what's going to make the most efficient transport and set up and take down to you. Right. Now, if you just got a few, um, I just stand them up in the warehouse against the shelf or in a corner. Yeah. Um, then my, my drape, I actually have in those bins that like close like that. Yeah. Like yeah. 20 to 30 at a time in there. And then my, um, my That's bases. That's where my Halloween decor is, is in those exact same right. containers. Yeah. And then my bases, because they slide into each other, I got them set up on shelves. Mm -hmm. um, I think I can get six out and then, yeah. and you put a piece of wood on top and then do six more like all, you know, like, and then just keep stacking up. And then as you need them, you just go grab the 12 you need. And then, yeah. yeah, that's how I store at my warehouse and I don't have that many. Yeah. My biggest advice on the uprights, I think, is um, even if you have limited space, it's important to be as organized as you can be, because if you have, um, uh, let's say, a 14 foot setup for an event, those would be your eight to 14s as opposed to your seven to 12s. And you just don't want your guys to accidentally grab a couple seven to 12s and then you've got some short pipes. So. You know, if there's a way to organize them a little bit, just because they look so similar, so it's extremely easy to mix them up, just as far as hardware, um, I would try to, you know, if you can just like color code a box, even if you need to or something or, you know. Spray paint the inside of your poles. Yes. That's a good idea. 
Well, that's that's what ten, the, when you when we're doing frame tents, all the manufacturers have color coded on the inside. So inside it's blue, you know that's twenty feet. Inside it's red, you know that's fifteen feet. See, I would have just given you the credit for that. I'm like, damn, that's genius. Good job. <laughs> no, it's it, it comes from frame tents. Nice, um, and, nice. And it's it's kind of um, universal, but there's some companies who have different colors, but mostly if it's blue you know it's 20 feet well for some of the tent guys a lot of what we're getting into um i mentioned we have a huge cnc machine so we are we're now making the white vinyl uh concrete block covers oh, right. uh, with the custom colored thread colors and things like that we're doing tent bags now um i actually just met with a really big client of mine and we're going to be manufacturing their tent bags with like a, a color coded strip across the top for the size of right. on the bag and then we're doing a secondary color if it's like an end I'm learning about tents. It's it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Color so we're working on a lot of those projects for the tent guys too. So. Well, yeah, color coded bags are a big thing. There's a there's a company, Rental Innovations. Brian, yeah, he's yes. terrific. He makes he makes bags color coded and stuff too. But the only thing about him is like, if I want a giant green bag, he's only got green bags in certain sizes. But his giant bag is purple. So. I just want him to be a little more flexible, but I get it. Like yeah. you can't, you can't just make a whole bunch of different color sizes, different, you know, like. Well, see, we actually, we actually can. You can, so, yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of the, uh, the great thing about Camel Textiles is Pipe and Drape is a chapter of it. Um, textiles, being a textile company, I have access to every kind of material you can imagine. Right. I mean, it's, it's family owned and operated for 30 plus years. Um, and they brought me on because I had the pipe and drape experience <laughs> and then they kind of were able to source the material and is this the right uprights and, you know, what do you think of this fabric and that kind of thing. But, but the bones and the, and the meat and potatoes of this company is the textile. So I have so many different options to play with and colors and things like that. And so I am able to, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have, um, you know, to work for a company like this to where you know, the R and D stuff is the fun stuff. You know, right. I like customizing for people and, and doing these, you know, different cool things. So we, we have the ability to do different colored tent bags for anybody. Right. All right. So guys don't just contact Canwell textiles for pipe and drape. They do ceiling swag. They do tent bags. They do anything you want with, with, uh, I don't want to just call it fabric. Cause I mean, just all kinds of different material. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stuff all that needs to be flame retardant, uh, things that need to breathe. Um, things that are mildew resistant, um, you know, all these different things. I'm also working on like stacked chair pallet covers, right? Okay. Um, you know, with the shivari chairs and the resin chairs and things like that. So, I mean, like I said, we just, we just cut and do these designs and, and we can just turn out hundreds of them. And it's, it's so much fun creating stuff. It's like being in like, you know, Batman's cave, you know, just putting a bunch <laughs> of different things together. It's such a blast. Nice. Well, Brandy, I thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm going to let my friend, who has a youtube channel too which his link will be in the description come on and ask you a few questions right now Wonderful. and then uh everyone i'm going to put the links in the description so you can go check it out and uh if you have any follow-up questions for pipe and drape i i talked to brandy about this a little but i'm putting her on the spot now if we get enough people in the comments to say like go live or whatever if you've got more questions i think brandy is willing to go live one night and answer all your questions Oh yeah, but if we if we go live too late though, I'll probably have a glass or two of wine. So it's just it's up to you what you get at that point, really. Oh, uh, it's okay. Usually when I go live, I I drink a few, and everyone knows <laughs> it, so it's okay. I love it. I love being able to answer questions and like help people see their way through it because I mean, really, the return on investment. It's just it's such an easy yes. It, it, it's very little risk. It's you know the cost of the product gets paid for so quickly in your business and especially with guys like you who are already tied into events. I mean, you've already got a lot of the clientele. You're just upgrading your package of what you can offer. I just, I love working on that side of it so much. And I appreciate you having me on, Adam. No problem. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So the last bit of this video is from one of my patrons from Patreon, a viewer. And he also has a new YouTube channel where he's documenting his journey of opening his party rental company from day one. And I'll link his youtube channel down in the description um him and his wife came on to ask questions about pipe and drape because they were thinking about getting into it all right so we have a startup event rental business and we noticed that in our local market it seems like pipe and drape is underserved and i was like just this morning or last night i think i emailed adam asking what's the deal with pipe and drape and he 
called me this morning telling me that you guys had this interview planned. So it was like perfect timing. So, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure you hear the same questions all the time. So I, I'll go into like our basic ones, like, you know, like one of the things about is like determining an, a starting inventory, right? Mm -hmm. So like, if we want to go after like the ability to set up gyms and expos and like stuff like that, mm -hmm. how, you know, what is a realistic starting inventory for pipe? And then, because we're, we're, we're actually looking into sub renting most of the drape at first, but, okay. um, yeah, like how do you determine a starting inventory? Okay. Um, that question does come up a lot, but I really like it. A, a large part of my customers are just like these giant wholesalers and they just submit their orders. This is kind of the fun part when you can actually have somebody who's starting and wants to know the research and things like that. And you can really start them on a strong foot so they can be successful. Um, where are you located specifically? Colorado Springs. Okay. So that's important in determining what your standard looks like. It's going to really come down to what your customers are asking for. Um, and you're just kind of making record of that over the course of however long, you know, maybe a couple of months at least kind of paying attention to what people are calling in and asking for. And that's going to be your biggest indicator because there are vanilla packages that I could tell you about what standards will be. And I can get into that. Um, but a big part of it is really just paying attention to what people are asking for and also a good start is if you've got uh, event companies and or event halls rather and gyms that are in your area, um, you'll know a lot of weddings are going to get booked there. A lot of events are going to get booked at that hall. So if you know those measurements, yeah, I think that would be a great starting point. You know, blah, blah, blah. Event hall has 300 square feet. You can at least get started with that. And then, you know, every time that same hall gets booked, you're ready to go. OK, yeah. So for first the expos and like the trade shows and stuff like that. Is there like a standard sizing? Is it yes. the eight foot tall kind of, yeah, maybe you can go over the standards. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a couple of things on this is really interesting, especially right now. Um, there originally were a lot of barriers to entry when getting into expo pipe and drape because you're going up against such big players. I mean, I want to say less than a handful of companies at the, at one point, we're just doing all of the shows and it's very hard for an event company that's growing their inventory to then get into the expos and trade shows. So that used to be a hard barrier to entry. There's a couple of things that have happened over the, these last two years. One is that a lot of people unfortunately have either closed their business completely, even the big guys, or they've you know been bought out or something like that. And so you've, you have had locations closed. So there's certain areas where they just can't compete anymore because it costs too much to come from another state. Um, and then you also have uh, inventory issues. So obviously with everything that's going on with these containers and things overseas, uh, you have people who are reaching out and making calls because their normal go-to people may not have as much or they don't have enough to cover the event. So this is actually kind of a sweet spot for people trying to get into expos and trade shows. Um, so that's just kind of from a background of barrier to entry. I think now is actually the perfect time to kind of build into that. It's a really, it's much easier and softer to get in now because uh, people are just making the rounds and calling more people. Now, as yeah. far as standards, uh, you're absolutely right. There are definitely your bare bones minimum standard is going to be your eight foot fixed pipe. This is like your skinny one and a half inch diameter pipe. Um, you're going to do you do booths. So it's going to be eight foot uprights, three foot uprights, bases for each, those square steel bases. Um, and then you've got the telescoping drape supports. Most common is a six foot to 10 foot telescoping drape support. That's what actually hooks into the upright, and that's where you hang your drapes. Um, you'll see them called support rods, drape rods, a couple of different words, but those are those are it. And then your basic trade show fabric is called banjo fabric. It's an open weave material. Um, it's inherently flame retardant, which is also very important. We may get a chance to cover that, but maybe not on this one. Uh, it's just really that's an important characteristic of the drape. It's about 48 inches wide. Typically, you would need about four panels per 10 feet across. So that's a, a good way to go with it. And then you always want to start off with black and white, specifically Snow White. That's going to be your brighter white. Uh, some other companies will call it just white, and that's more of an ivory. So Snow White and black are going to be your easiest go-to colors to start off with. All right, Brandy, I was going to ask a question now that we're getting started in the business and um, who is the client that you are marketing to? Is it wedding planners, high schools? What does that market look like? Okay, that's a good question. So 
who I'm marketing to is going to be a little different than who you're probably marketing to. Sure. So I market to event companies, event rental companies, as well as bigger trade show decorators. And then I also do a lot of specialty work for AV companies. So people who are doing like stages, presentations, stage skirting, um, for tent companies, we've actually expanded a lot in the last year in particular, we've gotten into, uh, some of the additional products. We do the, um, concrete block covers, the white vinyl covers, uh, for the tent companies. And then we're also getting into, uh, tent bags. I actually had a meeting with somebody today. We've got, um, We've got this big CNC machine in our warehouse. So if you get a pattern for something, you can pretty much make hundreds of it. And so we're working on the tent bag material. Uh, and so I'm just learning actually from your side, what's really important, what people want as far as size, color coding, things like that. Um, mm -hmm. We do also do some work with universities and schools as far as uh, proms, graduations. Churches are actually surprisingly big. And I'll tell you why a lot of churches, and some of you may know this, um, they're they start off small so they'll meet in a gym or they'll meet in a movie theater or a warehouse or something like that until they get enough money to establish a building and pipe and drape is huge in this because you can completely convert a space and make it more intimate so that the message kind of comes yeah. out better mm -hmm. and what's important is to know kind of little loopholes and tricks for them so for example and a lot of times they don't have a lot of money right they're just starting out so with churches, for example, you could do, um, let's say you're in a gym. So we all know the noise is terrible in a gym. So you've got a band playing and it's just bouncing off the walls. So one thing I would recommend, if they have the money, they could hang velour all the way around. And it's a, it, you could be eight to 10 feet high. That's plenty for it to have the effect that you want it to have um, so that the sound doesn't bounce everywhere. But then the alternative I've done for more budget conscious is you just put velour panels behind the band and then you'll do like a thinner poly premier material around the rest of the perimeter. And that's kind of like a, like a linen fabric, like a table linen type fabric. Um, and they really appreciate that. So when you're reaching out to churches, kind of asking them where they are in their process. Um, also another surprising area is the kids area of churches. Um, banjo fabric in particular has a lot of different colors. And so a lot of times they'll get different colored banjo because it's, it's a low cost fabric, it's machine washable. So you can put them in the kids' areas and just kind of make that a fun, uh, a fun kind of setup as well. So those, there's a couple of different areas you can jump into. So I was curious also about just the the labor demands for this stuff. Is it easily calculatable? And like for a small team like us with no staff, it's just us right now. Maybe a helper from time to time. But like, it, it, is it something that two people could handle a large job? It would just take longer, or does it make sense? You know what I mean? Like, can you calculate labor costs pretty simply, like by the foot, for example? Yes. Yeah, I think you can. Absolutely. Um, I, I think when you're not, when you get into things that are more complex, like uh, ceiling swagging and things like that, things you would do inside a tent, for example, like going across the roof, that would be a little bit more complex as far as uh, figuring out the labor that you would need. Um, but it is a very simplistic product. I mean, really, you, end users even can, can use it and figure it out pretty easily, I think. Uh, all it takes is having the vision, which event people seem to have, you know. Um, we also have uh, YouTube videos that will explain how to put different things together. Like if you have, if you want a traditional hopa, you can, you know, watch the video and it tells you how to put it together. But the pieces itself is very simplistic. Well, I do have a question. Brandy, you were talking about um, different types of fabric. Velour, your, um, is this something, you know, as a startup, we don't imagine that we will have every type of color, every type of fabric, but we can go to the craft store and get a big bolt of fabric. Is that something you can use in lieu of, you know, a standard drape that's, you know, altered to fit a pipe? Yes. Yeah. So I think from a cost standpoint and an availability standpoint, I would find that sweet middle. And what I mean by that is, in each of the fabrics, banjo, poly premier, sheer, like that voil and velour, um, mm -hmm. I would at least stock up on black and white. If I were going in order, I would go black, white, uh, blue, red, and silver or gray. Though in that order is what I would stock up on. So I wouldn't run out to get red drape right now. Um, but uh, I would get those from somebody like Canwell Textiles just because they have wholesale prices. You don't have to sew it yourself or anything like that. But if you have a large event that has kind of an odd color that you need to do quickly, then yes, I would definitely go towards 
you know, something from Joann's or, or kind of a local uh, fabric supplier. Uh, the only thing is you have to make sure it's inherently flame retardant and all that good stuff as well. Um, just for safety reasons, fire marshals sometimes will pop up on places and, you know, have everybody take well, it down. So. And that's another question we had, you know, I think a pipe and drape in a big gym for, let's say, a prom. We have exits. We have, you know, maybe candles burning on tables, whatever. The, what are some of the safety guidelines or even if there's safety codes, city codes that we need to abide by? Yeah. So that actually comes down to the provider. So the responsibility of pipe and drape safety is more on me than it would be on you. And for that reason, uh, we go by the California standard, which is the most stringent across the country. And so something to look for whenever you're ordering drape from whomever is that you have that flame seal on the label that shows that it is flame retardant and it's okay to be around flame. The whole thing about it being flame retardant is how it performs should it catch on fire. And what that means is um, there's actually a video on my LinkedIn page where I did a test. And um, if it's not flame retardant and you light something on fire, it'll start to catch something else. Um, some drape types will actually drip fire. <laughs> it's like the weirdest thing. It almost looks like lava. It's wild. Uh, and, and so you can tell immediately, whereas you hold the flame to something flame retardant, it will catch, but it immediately goes out. Okay. Um, that kind of thing. So it's not a problem to have flame around it. Um, but just to make, you know, it itself is a safety measure, if that makes sense. Um, sure. Now, as far as dressing up gyms for special events and you have different door openings and things like that, the best thing you can give your uh, sales rep that's going to provide the drape for you or the pipe for you is like a schematic drawing or photos or anything like that. Because by knowing where the openings are, you can fit, you know, maybe I need to put a three to five foot drape support on, you know, where you're turning that corner right there as opposed to hitch up with a bunch of six to 10. So you can get a quote based off of, I've got 300 square feet or 300 linear feet, but it's always better if you have, if, you, if you've got eyes on the venue and you know, I've got an opening here, I've got double doors in this side, you know, that can help be a little bit more strategic. And that way, you know, that what you're getting quoted is gonna give you the best layout and it's gonna be easier to put up. It's gonna make more sense when you get it out of the box. And not always a rule of th thumb if you, you know, nervous about it you can always call the fire department and they can come out and take a look and let you know if it's to code or not or that you need to move something over to expose an entrance or exit absolutely absolutely and if you ever have any questions about your drape or anything like that you can always reach out to the company you ordered it from too and they should be able sure. you know we're always big on um i've even talked to a few fire marshals myself honestly uh you know they'll show up to a show site and the event coordinator gets a little nervous and i'm like no 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 i can send whatever paperwork you need the labels are on the drape you know just to show that somebody's grandma didn't make it in the basement somewhere <laughs> you know <laughs> safety is so 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 important so one of the things i guess i just want to wrap my head around is, is the i know like some some people so we've done some research and looked at you know, you know, a bunch of youtube videos and there's there's it seems to be like you guys were saying two different markets or the two things that I've seen is like these fancy backdrops. that are really kind of embellished and hand wrapped in certain fancy ways. And then just more like the trade show stuff. Yes. And so the working relationship between like, we're not wedding planners or like event planners kind of thing. So the relationship between we just want to own and rent the equipment out. What's the working relationship? between us and getting that service out to someone like a backdrop, who does that? You know what I mean? Or do we need to learn that skill? Like that who does stuff? the setup of the backdrops or who does well, the setup? Yeah, like, say if there's a more embellished type of backdrop, that's not just mm -hmm. a plain pipe and drape panel, but like yeah. um, who is the one pl designing those, planning those, coming up with them and how do we, what is the working relationship between us and that person? Okay, that's a good question. So um, there's a couple of different answers. So one, um, we as a supplier in our YouTube channel, we're developing, uh, we have some already, but we've also got things coming up where we're going to be releasing videos on how to do different setups like a hopa, like overlapping, swagging, um, you know, tips and tricks. Like if you want to, if you've got like an eight foot upright, you wouldn't get eight foot drape if you intend to pull and drag it down, you would want like 12 foot drape so that you have enough give to pull down. So um, a lot of times your supplier will have that information uh, like we do. We like to coach people through it. Um, and believe it or not, the, the most intricate uh, setup that you've ever seen, I guarantee you is extremely easy to do. 
it's, it's it, there's there's so many little accessory pieces that make those things work. And I mean, it's just it's so simple. We have a product, uh, for example, where um, it's called a double X and it's it's like a six inch extender that sits on top of your upright and it allows you to run double drape supports. Um, and so you can do one over the other and then swag the front one through and just do a tie back. And I mean, it's it, it's unbelievably simple, which I love about those because they look crazy intricate and you can price it as such, but it takes nothing to set up. It is one of those things. So that was kind of the second part of the answer is that one, your supplier, you know, we have YouTube videos, we'll coach people on the phone, things like that. Um, but also it doesn't hurt to have somebody uh, who's a part of your company who kind of plays around with it. You know, if you have a set um, and kind of dual purpose, get a set. If you have a showroom to kind of show off your products for customers, um, set some stuff up with it so that people go, oh, yeah, I really like that. You know, that's the bridal package or something. Um, but also use it as kind of a workshop and have people just kind of play with it and see what they can come up with. It's really fun also to kind of see what different layouts and designs and layers you can put on top of each other. Yeah, because I was thinking some of the designs I've seen are they involve like floral, they involve lighting mm -hmm. and involve other aspects that we're not into. And like, so usually I, I would think conventionally like an event planner would be the one saying, okay, here's the design. I need a florist. I need a pipe and drape company. I need a this, I need a that. And we're just the pipe and drape company. But you're saying like, we can have more intricate designs, but like there's other things other than just pipe and drape involved, right? Sometimes. Yes. Is that not very common or? It is, but I'll tell you something. You'd be surprised what you can pull off with a little chicken wire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling, I mean, it sounds crazy, but you could in theory hire an event planner and have to do those things. Um, for me, however, if I'm entering a market, I want to be really competitive. So I'm going to try to be um, as frugal as possible and try to stay with my own people if I can, at least to start. Um, and, and just pay attention to videos and things like that. I'm, t you know, you can get fake flowers and chicken wire, and and you know, there we have a, a, a million different accessory pieces. You know, I, I get this all the time. Actually, I have people send me these crazy photos of stuff that's just so beautiful, and they're like, Brandy, what do I need to do this? And I'm like, Gotcha, man. And, and I'm either I'm, I'm taking them through a quote of what they need in pipe and drape, and then I'm sending them videos and like links on Amazon. I mean, whatever to get to the different pieces that they need to make those setups. Um, but I mean, I'm telling you, would be so surprised how simple it is. And they look stunning. Um, and, and there's as far as from a, going back to safety too. you know, hanging lights and things like that. Um, these uh, pipe and drape systems are one of the people actually asked on the YouTube video. Uh, they're quite sturdy so they can handle depending on what your setup is. I mean, you can handle 45 pounds roughly of stuff on a, on a standard setup. Um, and so we have these accessory attachments where you can have, you know, overhead lights or we have, um, for example, something, it's a seven inch balance hanger and it hooks into the drape support and it allows your drape to be about seven inches apart if you have parallel drapes. And that allows you to run lights in between like fairy lights or, you know, something like that. Um, and so I'm telling, I mean, if you have time to play with it, like even if you have like a, you know, interns or something, you know, people that are trying to get into the business or something like that, you know, have them play around with it. And then also have somebody who's really good with photographs and have them taking pictures of these setups as well. So you can put it up on your websites too and say, Hey, this is our bridal package. This is our, you know, weekend getaway setup or something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. So in terms of own, like, say we were to own all the drapes, what is the maintenance requirements? Like, can you just pop them in a wash machine? Uh, yes. Do they dry clean? Do they need press? Like how often do you need to clean them? You know? Yeah. So um, with these drapes, they're all machine washable. Uh, heat is never your friend. So if you're able to hang these, that's going to be probably your best bet, especially with the banjo fabric in particular, because it is an open weave material. If you try to dry it, that thing will shrink down to a table napkin quicker than you can believe it. <laughs> I mean, it's that stuff is it's it, it happens so easily. So um as far as the frequency of having to wash it, you really don't have to wash it that often. I mean, one of the things that we do as a standard, um, unless you say otherwise as a client, uh, we'll do each drape about two inches short. That's the industry standard. So an eight foot setup would be, instead of 96 inches, the drape would be 94 inches. And that actually helps so it's not dragging the floor, people aren't stepping on it, it's not picking up dust and things like that. And that actually adds to the longevity of it. Um, 
So you really, you don't have to wash it as often. It's not going to be in the elements, like some of your tents and things like that. It's, you know, it's usually indoors or if it is outdoors, it's for a temporary window of time. Um, and so, yeah, just cold wash, um, gentle detergent, you know, uh, and you're good to go. Pretty low maintenance. And I mean, honestly, a lot of this stuff, the pipe too, a lot of people will just reuse the boxes that they come in um, for a, a really long time. I wouldn't get into... Uh, you know, some people asked about storage. I wouldn't get into like the big metal storage carts and things like that until you build up a pretty significant inventory. And by that, I mean, like, I'd say 2000 feet plus of pipe and drape. Then I would start looking into storage. Um, but really, I mean, you can get away pretty far with like those roll around um, linen carts, the things that like uh, ho hotel maids use and things like that for sheets and stuff. If you can get your hand on a couple of those hampers. Uh, especially if you're in the season and you're renting over and over and over again, these are, they're not wrinkle free, but all of these materials are pretty much wrinkle resistant. So if you're able to go in, set up at least 24 hours ahead of time, you should be pretty good to go as far as like wrinkles and things like that. Um, so when you look at a lot of draping pictures on Pinterest and whatnot, you see mm -hmm. these elegant ceiling drapes. Can you elaborate a little bit on how that's done, how that that's incorporates in pipe and drape the actual wall? Specifically, though, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there are certain accessories when you're dealing with a venue. I know a tent, I believe, is a bit easier to set up um, with venue halls, like the really, really tall, you know, three feet, you know, not three feet, three story high ceilings and things like that. Um, there are ceiling attachments that you can use. A lot of times the venue itself will have it because they've just booked so many ceremonies and events. So they're going to have the attachments that you need. Um, all you would need from me in that case would be the fabric by the yard. So we do sell it by the bolt. And so a lot of times, if you can tell me that it's that a room is, you know, the various size of the room and uh, kind of how much swag you're wanting. And again, it's a lot easier in tent setups because those are a bit more standard um, than I can actually provide how much you would need of each length. Um, and then so basically, uh, let's say that you're doing. I'm trying to think of an actual measurement. Like recently I, I did a job for a client and I did, uh, I believe 150 feet of the white voil, which is like 10 feet wide and then 150 feet of it. And we did a pocket at the top and a pocket at the bottom, kind of like one really long, huge panel. And the pocket at top was used to attach to the ceiling. And then it went down right where the ceiling meets the wall on the side. And then he was able to pipe and drape the rest of it down through that bottom pocket met right in that corner. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're basically, the attachment is at the top, the peak of the tent, and then it connects to the pipe and drape where it yes. swoops down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that itself is, it's pretty easy to put up, the actual method to put it up. What's going to be tricky is when you get into a situation where you're doing from the ceiling, if you're doing multiple swags before you get out, um, oh. When you're looking down the tent making sure that all those swags are equal that's what's kind of tedious that can you know be a little frustrating and take a little bit more time all right guys thanks jenny and kyle um, thank you guys I'll, I'll so much that was a blast thank you i'll Have talk to you guys later you guys too yeah.